On today's show, German prosecutors are now targeting Volkswagen's chairman in the emission scandal. Tesla decides to make glass for its cars in-house. And Bob Lutz predicts that car sharing will completely change the automotive industry. All that and more coming right up on AutoLine Daily. This is AutoLine Daily, the show for enthusiasts of the automotive industry. Even though the Volkswagen emission scandal broke more than a year ago, we're a long way from seeing the end of this story. Now, German prosecutors are going after VW's chairman, Hans-Dieter Poch. They accuse him of not announcing in a timely matter that the company was under investigation. That is considered stock manipulation. VW sat on the news for a couple of weeks before admitting that it was caught cheating by the U.S. EPA. You know, we here at AutoLine were always curious about the timing of the disclosure. It was the EPA that made the announcement one day after the press days at the 2015 Frankfurt Auto Show. It seems that the EPA was waiting for Volkswagen to make the announcement, and when it did not, the agency publicly accused the company of cheating. VW denies that it broke the law in how it disclosed the information, But then again, these are the same people who deny they broke any emissions laws in Europe. Volkswagen, of course, is losing tens of billions of dollars over the scandal and needs to cut costs as fast as it can. Reuters reports that VW will keep its MQB platform in production for two generations. Now get this, in the auto industry, a generation for a platform is generally eight years. That would suggest that VW would keep the MQB platform until 2032. Other reports say that Audi will move the A4 and A5 onto the MQB platform because VW wants to build 7 million vehicles offered every year, up from 2 million in 2014. And all that would provide massive cost savings for the company, more than enough to cover the cost of the scandal. Toyota has poo-pooed electric cars, and it put all of its might behind developing hydrogen fuel cells instead. But now it looks like the giant automaker is throwing those plans into reverse. Newspaper reports out of Japan say Toyota will come out with an electric car in 2020 that can go about 200 miles on a charge. Governments around the world are investing in recharging stations for electric cars, but there isn't a whole lot of action in building hydrogen stations. And it looks like Toyota suddenly realized its strategy could be seriously flawed. Still to come, General Motors is moving production of the Holden Commodore from Australia to Germany. Auto Line Daily is brought to you by Bridgestone Tires, your journey, our passion. Dow Automotive Systems, advanced materials that deliver better results. And by Lear a global leader in automotive seating and electrical systems. Nissan has come up with some ways to repurpose used leaf batteries, but here's something far cooler than anything the automaker came up with. An electric startup called Night Shift Bikes shoehorned a leaf battery pack into a custom-made 2003 Suzuki Savage motorcycle. They call it the Leafy Savage. A brushless DC motor that puts out up to 40 horsepower was stitched into the spoked rear wheel to bring the system together. Electricity is pulsed to the motor so that all that torque doesn't rip the bike out from under you. The harder you twist the throttle, the shorter the pulse width becomes. You can even adjust the power curve for better acceleration or more range via a data port behind the seat. But we were a bit surprised to find out that the Leafy Savage has the same range as the car, about 100 miles. A few years back, General Motors decided to stop manufacturing vehicles in Australia by the end of 2017. That means the iconic Holden Commodore, which has been built down under since 1978, will now be imported into Australia. Wards reports that the all-new model, which goes on sale in 2018, will be produced in Germany. The Commodore is based on GM's new G2 global architecture that's shared with the Opel Insignia. But that's not the only change. The Commodore was traditionally powered by a V8, but now it's going to get a V6, along with all-wheel drive and a nine-speed automatic. 
The architecture was engineered in Germany, but Holden engineers had a hand in the development to ensure it will still appeal to Aussie car buyers. Tesla makes a lot of parts in-house, and now we can add glass to the list. Elon Musk recently confirmed it has come up with a new type of glass. Not only will it be used in solar roof tiles for buildings, the new glass will make its way onto the Model 3. And man, does this glass look strong, as you can see in this video. No word yet what makes this glass unique or where it's going to be used on the car, but the Model 3 does have an awfully big glass roof. Coming up next, Bob Lutz says car sharing is going to change the automotive industry as we know it. For the people at Dow, racing is a sport and a science. We enjoy one and learn from the other. But like most competitive people, we like winning at both. This is the human element at work. Dow. Last week on AutoLine After Hours, we had none other than Bob Lutz as our guest. He shared his thoughts on a wide range of topics, including how car and ride sharing will impact both car companies and car owners, and listen to what he had to say. Car sharing services um, can have an impact on car ownership because, say, you, you pay for a service which, depending on your weekend needs, you can either take a Tahoe or take a Camaro convertible or take a Corvette coupe or whatever happens to suit your needs at that particular time. You just That's call up and say, um, I'm a member of this group that has access to, you know, it probably goes by points, you know, the more, more expensive vehicle, they deduct more points. But I, I could see that that would have a, a potential effect on car ownership. Uh, but th the car companies are embracing it. Why? Because if they don't, their competitors will. So you're you're forced to go along with it even if you even though you see that there's an inherent risk in there long term you have to go along with it but again it's it's to me it's all i'm i'm glad to see uh general motors and ford embracing all this new technology and these new ways to use vehicles and these new ways to uh conquer the problem of efficient surface transportation even though they know that they may be potentially contributing to their own demise. You know, we always have a great time when Bob Lutz is on the show, and you can watch that entire show right now on our website, autoline.tv, or you can find it on our YouTube channel. But that wraps up today's show. Thanks for watching, and please join us again tomorrow for the latest news in the global automotive industry.